Okay, this is uh, section 10.2. In 10.1, in we talked about the uh, trigonometric ratios, and we looked at using those ratios to find lengths of sides of right triangles. Uh, in 10.2, we're going to look at the inverse of that and use what we call the inverse trigonometric functions to find the um, measure of angles within right triangles. Okay. So if you know the value of trigonometric ratios, you can use inverses to find the measure of an angle. The inverse sine function, so the first one that we're looking at, the inverse sine function, which we write like this, sine inverse, maps the sine of x onto x. In other words, we've just kind of switched our x and our y. And the inverse of the function that maps x onto the sine of x. Okay. We have the same functions for the inverse cosine, which we denote like this, and the inverse tan, which we tangent, which we um, denote like this. Okay, so they can all be used in this similar similar fashion, but we generally use inverse trigonometric ratios to find the measure of angles. Now, it doesn't mean just taking that ratio and flipping the top and bottom. Okay, that does not represent the inverse trigonometric ratio. So let's take a look. If you haven't done so already, make sure that you read example one on page 670. And then if you want to watch how I do this problem number one, or maybe you want to try it yourself. Uh, if I have triangle QRS, which is a right triangle, and I want to find the measure of angle S, this angle right here. Well, I look at the two sides that I know. I know two of the sides of the triangle, 15 and 19. And actually, I could use Pythagorean's theorem even to find the third side. But that's not what I'm looking for. I'm looking for the measure of this angle. So here's what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, well, the cosine of that angle, and I'm just going to call that angle theta, is equal to the adjacent over the hypotenuse, or 15 over 19. So if the cosine of theta is equal to 15 over 19, what I'm going to do to get theta by itself is I'm going to take the inverse cosine. So if I take the inverse cosine of the cosine of theta, that's equal to theta. Therefore, I have to do it on the other side as well. So theta is equal to the inverse cosine of 15 over 19. So then I'm going to go to my calculator, and we have a way of doing that on our calculator as well. So you'll notice that to get inverse cosine, I'm going to hit Control Cosine. So that's how I got the inverse cosine up there of 15 over 19. And remember, hit Control Enter. If you do that, you get 37.86, or about 37.9 degrees. So approximately 37.9 degrees. As we look at number two, it says find the measure of an acute angle of the acute angles of a three, four, five right triangle. Okay, so if I'm going to find the um, the measures of the angles for the three, four, five right triangle, um, there's, there's several ways that I can do it. I'm going to start by finding the measure of angle x here. So to do that, I'm going to say, um, and, and like I said, I can use a lot of different things. I can use 4 and 5 or 3 and 4. It doesn't matter. But whichever two you pick, you need to make sure that you use the trigonometric ratio that fits those two. So I'm going to start with using 4 and 5. Well, 4 is the opposite to angle x, and 5 is the hypotenuse for angle x. Therefore, um, to, to find that, I'm going to say the sine of x is equal to opposite, which is 4, over hypotenuse, which is 5. And then to find x, I'm going to take the inverse sine of both sides. Therefore, x is equal to the inverse sine of 4 fifths. Now, at this point, I'm going to go to my calculator. And you'll notice that it's about 53.1 degrees. 
So the measure of angle X is 53.1 degrees. Now we could use trigonometry to find angle Y, but we don't need to because I know that all three angles of a right triangle have to add up to 180 degrees. Since angle Z is 90 degrees, that leaves only 90 left over. If 53.1 degrees is X, then Y would have to be 90 minus 53.1 or 36.9 degrees. So we found the three angles of that uh, acute or of that right triangle there. We can use trigonometric functions to find the distance, and we can use inverse trigonometric functions to find angle measures. Okay, so if that's the case, if we want to find an angle of elevation or an angle of depression, which we're going to find are the exact same thing, what we're going to do is we're going to use inverse sine, inverse cosine, or inverse tangent to do that. If you haven't done so already, please read example 3 on page 672 before trying example, this example 3 here on your notes. Okay, it says, a 115-foot ladder attached to a fire truck rests against the side of the building so that the top of the ladder is 111 feet above the ground. Find the angle formed by the truck and the ladder to the nearest tenth of a degree. So I did a little drawing here. Uh, the building, 111 feet. The ladder is 115 feet. We're looking for this angle right here. I'll call that theta. So if I'm going to do that, if I look at this side and this side, the two that I know, in relation to theta, this is the opposite side and this is the hypotenuse. And the, the trigonometric ratio that relates the opposite and the hypotenuse is sine. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say the sine of theta is equal to the opposite 111 over the adjacent 115. So to solve that equation for theta, that means I'm going to take the inverse sine of both sides. And if I do that, the inverse sine of the sine of theta is just theta. And then over here, I have the inverse sine of 111 over 115. So that's what I'm going to be putting into my calculator then. So it's about 74.8 degrees.